Hello everyone and welcome back to the Lost Planeswalker. You're here with me, Jesse the Lost Planeswalker of our Lost Caverns of Ixalan Commander deck series and we have Amelia Benavides Aguirre or something like that. <laughs> so Amelia is a white and a black. So Amelia is a white and black ledger creature vampire scout with ward pay three life. Whenever you gain life, Amelia explores. Then you destroy all other creatures if its power is exactly 20. So this is a really unique commander. We don't see abilities like this all too often, but in Orzhov, I think this is actually quite easy to achieve. We have so many cards that gain us life a turn, and this isn't just whenever you gain one or more life, it's whenever you gain life. So any lifelink triggers, you know, any triggers that are, you know, three or four at a time, we get to explore all those times and we either pitch stuff to a graveyard or put plus one plus one counters or get lands to our hand. So it's a really cool deck. So starting out, you know, I have just basic lands like I always do. I'm going to let you build that out. We got plains and swamps. I'm not going to go into too much detail because, you know, do this however you want. You know, we do have some spells in here that do require us to have, you know, a certain number of mana pips. So as you build this or look at my deck list and maybe change stuff up, you can adjust your land base accordingly. But starting off, the first main feature of this deck has to be life gain. You know, and we care about all that different life gain. So we have Authority of the Councils, Ailey Eternal Pilgrim, and Blind Obedience. Authority of the Council is an enchantment that says, creatures your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped, and whenever a creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, you gain one life. So every time a creature enters, you get to explore one. Ailey Eternal Pilgrim has Death Touch, one sack another creature, you gain life equal to its sacked creature's toughness. And then for one, a white and a black, sack another creature, exile target non-land permanent. Activate this ability only if you have at least 10 or more life than your starting life total. And Blight Obedience, one of my favorite cards because one, artifacts and creatures enter the battlefield tap, but it has extort, meaning that whenever you cast a spell, you may pay a black or a white. If you do, each opponent loses one life and you gain that much life in the process. It's a little subtle life gain, but it can really pick away over time. And if you can get a couple cards under the battlefield with extort, Extort, you know, you're not going to waste any mana every turn and you're just going to get a lot of good value from it. Next up is Blood Artist, Cosmos Elixir, and Cruel Celebrant. Blood Artist says whenever another creature dies, target player loses one life and you gain a life. Cosmos Elixir, at the beginning of your end step, if you may draw a card if your life total is greater than your starting, otherwise gain two life. And Cruel Celebrant says whenever Cruel Celebrant or another creature or planeswalker you control dies, each opponent loses life and you gain a life. Next up we have Crypt Ghast, Daxos Blessed by the Sun, and Debt to the Debtless. Crypt Ghast has Extort and whenever you tap a swamp for mana, add a black to your mana pool. And also has that great extort ability that I love. Daxos Blessed by the Sun says Daxos' toughness is equal to your devotion to white. And whenever another creature you control enters battlefield or dies, you gain one life. Debt to the Debtless is X white white black black sorcery. Each opponent loses two times X life and you gain life equal to the life lost this way. So a good way to pump a ton of mana later in the game when you don't have anything to do or maybe to close out a game. Next we have Drana's Emissary, Elas, Ilkor, Sadistic Pilgrim, and Elenda the Dusk Rose. Drana's Emissary has flying at the beginning of your upkeep. Each opponent loses one and you gain one. Elas, Ilkor, Sadistic Pilgrim has Death Touch and whenever another creature enters battlefield, battlefield under your control you gain a life and whenever another creature you control dies each opponent loses a life and Alenda the Dusk Rose has lifelink whenever another creature dies put a plus one plus one counter on Alenda and whenever Alenda dies create x one one white vampire creature tokens with lifelink where x is Alenda's power so if you can get this really big when our commander pops and destroys everything guess what we're gonna get a ton of lifelinking little vampires they're gonna help grow our commander even more feast of the victorious dead gray merchant of asphodel and indulging partition are next feast of the victorious dead is an enchantment that says at the beginning of your end step if one or more creatures died this turn you gain that much life and distribute that many plus one plus one counters among creatures you control green merchant of asphodel says when green merchant of asphodel enters the battlefield each opponent loses x life where x is your devotion black and you gain life equal to the life lost this way an indulging partition has flying lifelink and the beginning of your end step if you gain three or more life this turn each opponent loses three next up is kemble council of allocation karlov the ghost council in Kaya's Wrath. Kemball Council of Allocation says whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, they lose two and you gain two life. Karlov of the Ghost Council says whenever you gain life, put two plus one plus one counters on Karlov of the Ghost Council and a white and black remove six plus one plus one counters from Karlov of the Ghost Council to exile a target creature. And Kaya's Wrath is a sorcery that destroys all creatures and you gain life equal to the number of creatures you controlled that were destroyed this way. This is a good time to break and say if you aren't subscribed to my channel, please do so. I'm going to be putting out these videos all week and if you want to keep in touch you know please subscribe to uh, see those videos as they come out and i'm going to do all sorts of other content 
like I normally do. If you haven't seen some of my backlog of content, please go and check that out as well. But uh, let's get right back into those cards that gain you some life with Lisa, Forgotten Archangel, Luris of the Dream Den, and Markov Purifier. Lisa, Forgotten Archangel has Flying and Lifelink, and whenever another non-token creature you control dies, return that card to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. If a creature an opponent controls would die, exile it instead. Luris of the Dream Den, one of my favorite companions, has Lifelink. During each of your turns, you may cast one permanent spell with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard. And Markov Purifier has lifelink at the beginning of your end step. If you gained life this turn, you may pay two. If you do, a card. Obzidat Ghost Council, Pontiff of Blight and Revitalization is next. Obzidat Ghost Council is a legendary creature spirit advisor. And when it enters the battlefield, target opponent loses two and you gain two. And at the beginning of your end step, you may exile it. If you do, return to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of your next upkeep with haste. Pontiff of Blight has extort and gives all other creatures extort, meaning that you can just suck up a ton of life every turn. And Revitalize is just an instant that gains you three life and draws you a card. Rock's Faith Mender, Rodolph, Dustbringer, and Sarah Ascendant are next. Rock's Faith Mender has lifelink, and if you begin life, gain twice as much instead. Now, that's not going to trigger your commander an additional time, but gaining life is very, very good. Rodolph Dustbringer has Flying, Death Touch, and Lifelink, and whenever you gain life, Rodolph gains Indestructible until end of turn. At the beginning of your end step, you may pay one white black. When you do, return target creature card with mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, where X is the amount of life you gained this turn. And Sarah Ascendant is a one mana lifelinking creature that as long as you have 30 more life, meaning if you play this on turn one, it'll enter as a 6-6 six, six that has Flying and Lifelink, which is super great. Our next three cards are Shadow Spear, Shield Red the Apocalypse, and Soul Warden. Shadow Spear gives target creature plus one, plus one, trample, and lifelink, meaning if we equip this to our commander and we have 20 power, we can commander damage out an opponent that easily. We can also pay one to remove Hexproof and Indestructible from our opponent's creature until the end of the turn. Shield Red the Apocalypse is ledger creature Phyrexian Creator with Death Touch, and whenever you draw a card, you gain two life. And whenever our opponent draws a card, they lose two life. And Soul Warden is one of the two Soul Sisters that says whenever another creature creature enters the battlefield, you gain a life. And moving on, we have Soul's Attendant, Valkyrie Harbinger, and Viscop Guildmage. Soul's Attendant also, just like Soul Warden, says whenever another creature enters, you gain one life. Valkyrie Harbinger has Flying Life Link, and at the beginning of your end step, if you gain four more life, create a 4-4 White Angel creature token with Vigilance. And Viscop Guildmage says one white black target creature gains lifelink until end of turn. One white black whenever you gain life. This turn, each opponent loses that much life, which can probably turn into a really cool win con as well. Vana Butcher of Magan, Whip of Erebos, and Zulpart Cutthroat are our last three cards in this category. And Vana has Vigilance, Lifelink, and Pay 7 Life. Destroy target non-land permanent. Activate only during your turn. This seems pretty easy. We're going to be gaining so much life that just paying 7 is not going to be a big deal. Whip of Erebos gives everything Lifelink, which is going to be one of the key ways we're going to win this deck because each Lifelink trigger is going to be counted separately. So if we attack with 10 creatures, that's 10 Explorers. You know, that can lead us to just power up our commander very, very easily. We can also use it to return a target creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield field and then it exiles at the next end step. And Zulaport Cutthroat says whenever Zulaport or another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So because of this strategy is kind of so straightforward, you know, the main strategy is all this life gain cards. I also have a ton of good stuff cards that helps capitalize on us gaining life, making our opponents lose life, or just protect our board in one way or another. So starting there, we have Anguished Unmaking. Athreos God of Passage and Bolus's Citadel. Anguished on making, lets us exile a target non-land permanent, and we just lose three life. Athreos God of Passage makes it so whenever another creature we control dies, we can return it unless an opponent pays three life. Meaning when our commander pops and this is on the battlefield, we get to pick somebody and they're going to lose a ton of life unless they let us return everything that just died to our hand. And Bolus Citadel is a awesome card, especially if you can gain a ton of life because we can look at the top card of our library anytime. We can play the top card and just cast it where we pay life instead of mana. And then you can sack 10 non-land permanents and each opponent loses 10 life. Next up, we have Clear Class. Dam and Dark Ritual. Clear class says if you would gain life, you gain that much plus one instead. Whenever you gain life, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control, making it easier to get our commander up to 20. Or whenever we reach level three, we can turn a creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield and gain life equal to its toughness. Our next card destroys a target creature. A creature destroyed this way can't be regenerated. And we can also overload it for two white white, making it so we destroy all creatures and none of them can be regenerated. And then we have Dark Ritual that can just be used to help ramp 
early. We can pay one black mana to make three. Deadly Dispute, D-Spark, and Eerie Interference are next. Deadly Dispute, one of my favorite cards to come out of the Forgotten Realms D&D set, which says as an additional cost, we can sack an artifact or creature, but when we do, we draw two cards and make a treasure. D-Spark lets us exile target permanent with mana value 4 or greater. Then Eerie Interference prevents all combat damage that would be dealt to you and creatures you control this turn by any creatures. Next up, we have Farewell, Flawless Maneuver, and Ghostly Prison. Farewell is a great removal spell that lets us exile whatever we want if we want artifacts, creatures, enchantments, and graveyards, or if we want to just pick any number of those, we could decide. Flawless Maneuver gives everything we control indestructible until end of turn, which would be great if we can cast this while our commander hits 20, because then we can cast it for free and keep everything on our board while removing everything from our opponents. And Ghostly Prison makes it so our opponents can't attack us unless they pay two for each creature that's attacking us. Infernal Grasp, Lorthal Corrupt Sheriff, and Mortify are next. Infernal Grasp can destroy a target creature, and we just lose two life in the process. Lorthal Corrupt Sheriff says whenever a player casts their second spell each turn, we lose one life and create a treasure. And Mortify lets us destroy target creature or enchantment. Oketra's Monument, Path to Exile, and Revival slash Revenge are next. Oketra's Monument says white creatures cost one less to cast, and whenever you cast a creature spell, we create a 1-1 one, one white cat warrior creature token, meaning that all of those things that say when something enters, we gain life, we're just going to get to trigger that with Oketra's Monument. Path to Exile lets us exile target creature and its controller, may search for a basic land and put on the battlefield tapped, and Revival and Revenge says Revival. Return target creature card with converted mana cost 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, or revenge, double your life total, and target opponent loses half their life rounded up. Very powerful card that can get us ahead in the game. Next we have Sign in Blood, Smothering Tithe, and Surge of Salvation. Sign in Blood, just good draw card, especially for our deck. We draw two cards, we lose two life. Smothering Tithe said, whenever an opponent draws a card, that player may pay two. If that player doesn't, we get to create a treasure token, leading us to do more and more on our turns unless they want to pay mana to stop us. And Surge of Salvation says, you and permanent you control gain hexproof until end of turn prevent all damage that black and or red sources would deal to you this turn. Swords to Plowshears, Teza, Envoy of Ghosts, and the Book of Exalted Deeds are next. Swords to Plowshears lets us exile a target creature, and if controller gains life. We can use this even on our own stuff to help us get our commander even bigger. Teza, Envoy of Ghosts is one of my favorite Teza cards. It is vigilance and protection from creatures, and whenever a creature deals combat damage to you, destroy that creature. Create a 1-1 white and black spirit creature token with flying. And Book of Exalted Deeds says at the beginning of your end step, if you gain three or more life this turn, create a 3-3 white angel creature token with flying. We can pay white, 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 tap exile book of exalted deeds, and put an enlightenment counter on an angel. And it gains, you can't lose the game, and your opponents can't win the game. And our last three cards in this deck are the one ring, voice of the blessed, and wayfarer's bauble. The one ring is great in this deck because we're going to be gaining so much life, it really doesn't matter how much this is dealing to us. So filling up our hand is just so much more important. This is indestructible, and when the one ring enters the battlefield, if you cast it, you gain protection from everything until your next turn. At the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life for each burden counter on the one ring, and you can tap it to put a burden counter on the one ring, then you draw a card for each burden counter on it. Voice of the Blessed says whenever you gain life, put a plus one plus one counter on Voice of the Blessed. As long as Voice of the Blessed has four or more plus one plus one counters on it, it has Flying and Vigilance. And as long as Voice of the Blessed has ten or more plus one plus one counters on it, it has Indestructible. And our last card, Wayfarer's Bobble. For two mana, we can tap Sack Wayfarer's Bobble, search your library for a basic land card, put on the battlefield tap, then shuffle. And that is it, Amelia. She's a super powerful card. I can see people playing this, you know, kind of gaining enough life, gaining 20, making it so everything dies, and then playing one more spell to give it 21 and commander damaging someone out of the game very, very easily. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing, you know, what do you guys think of this deck? Did I do a good job? Are there the life gain cards you would include or not include? You know, please leave it down in the comments down below. I would love to see your guys' opinions on this. Also, if you aren't subscribed, please consider subscribing to my channel. It would really mean a lot to me. I would love to get to 1,500 subscribers by the end of the year. And if all of you would help me do that, it would just mean so, so much. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And today's Scryfall card of the day is Crushing Canopy. Do not mistake your lofty vantage point for safety. Shaper Tuvasa. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you later, Planeswalkers.